So then it came time to me doing a new trick, and it was a triple twisting double backflip. And it was new to me that year. It was something that we were working on for Italy. And it was something that would score really high if done well, but the problem was I had yet to land it in competition. So I was standing up there, and I, when I go to schools now, I say I was listening to my iPod, but I was actually listening to my mini disc player, which kind of <laughs> dates me a little bit, but I was. And I was listening to it, and I was standing up there, and I started thinking, you know, this is kind of scary. I'm at the Olympics. Everyone I've ever mentioned that I had a dream of going to the Olympics is watching me. That school is stopped, and everyone from, from grade seven on, when I was in grade seven, they're watching me, thinking, this girl came from our hometown. And I'm about to do a trick that I've only landed once, and never in competition. And I started to get really nervous. And I started to feel myself just pull back that little bit and say, yeah, I just don't know if I can lay it all out there. What if I land on my face or my back? Or what if this is embarrassing? And I started to just feel myself pull back from my dreams just a little bit, thinking it's so easy to say, I could have won the Olympics if only I'd done this. Now, like I said, type A personality. So I know that there's a lot of time between jumps and that the announcer's out there and, you're, and you get anxious as you hear that every girl has done the best jump in the world. So I'd written myself a little note and I'd put it in my pocket and as I was standing up there, I just felt that note and I knew that it just said no regrets. And I wanted to leave those Olympics no matter what happened with no regrets. So I came down and I had a coach and, and this is the coach whose its job is to get the exact right speed. And he's also the last person I talk to before I do this jump. And it was his first Olympics and I came down and I looked at Dennis and Dennis looked at me and he was about to go into his spiel and I just said, no, I got it. And he looked at me, he's like, okay. Now Den and I, worked my whole career together, so now I know that I probably absolutely ruined his Olympic dream, because I didn't even give him a chance to say anything, and probably spent a lot of time thinking about what he was gonna say, but I just said, it's gonna be great. And I took that moment, and took that deep breath in, took the deep breath out, and as I was about to go, I turned, and I could hear the 20,000 people chanting my first name. And I looked up and I kind of gave Dennis one last terrified den. And he's like, it's okay, it's going to be great. And when I felt myself turn in, it was like that moment when your mind finally stops. And it just lets your body do everything that it's been trained to do. My Olympic Games last four seconds long. And in that time, just letting everything happen and going through the motions and hearing my coach, uh, who's the head coach, yell instructions and he's yelling, you're good, you're good, you're good. And that means just keep my form and my feet hit. And I skied out and it shows up and it says, Deidre Dion, personal best score, 189 points, first place. And you realize it's come together. It all happened and it's so exciting and you're beside yourself, you can barely breathe. And then you realize there's four girls left. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. You've done everything you possibly can on the day that it matters the most. And now you sit and wait. And your dream depends on sitting and waiting. And so I sat and waited quite well. My teammate came down and she went ahead of me. And if it wasn't going to be me, I wanted it to be one of my teammates. Veronica had been the veteran on the team. And, and we train and travel as a team 11 and a half months of the year, and we really bring the best out of each other. So to have her do well and to celebrate with her was, it was incredible. And the next girl down was an Australian girl, and she was dating one of my teammates at the time, and she went ahead of both of us, and you know, we're all thinking it didn't work out, but at the time, it seemed like she was going to be Canadian, and so, we're all celebrating and they're a little happier than me because there's still two people left and, and I'm in third. And the next girl down was a Belarusian girl and she botched her landing and touched her hands down and you know, you're thinking, poor her, but really you're thinking, yay me. <laughs> and 
came down to third or fourth. And I, I, you know, I've been to a few Olympics, and I really think there's no worse place than third or fourth, especially in an individual sport. And you're standing out there, and this girl, she's a Russian girl, and she's never in contention, and here she is leading the Olympics, and you're thinking, this can't happen, this can't happen. And she goes off, and she does a perfect jump, but it's an easy jump. And it comes up, and the score says, Olga Koryleva, fourth place. And I love to tell this story, not because it's a yay me, I won my Olympic medal in this moment, but for what happened after I won that Olympic medal. It was the moment where you realize you've won, and you look one way, and here's my parents, and my brothers, and my family, and my friends, and my dad is double fisting cigars and sweating bullets, and he's crying. Because my mom and my dad, you realize, have been, they taught me how to ski at three. They drove me to and from the ski hill four days a week until I could finally drive at 16. They were there for phone calls when I was in China and I crashed and I thought the world had ended and I was in tears. And they were there for phone calls when I won my first medal in 15 at an interprovincial competition. And they loved me no matter what. And it didn't matter if this was you know, what I wanted to be or not. They were just there. And then you turn the other way. And here's your coaches who wake up every single day not thinking, how can I be the best in the world? But how can I make Deidre the best in the world? How can I make Veronica the best in the world? And it was a moment where all of a sudden my selfish goal of being the best at this crazy sport turned into this realization that I was the face of this huge team that had everything to do with my success that day. And it made that medal, and it still makes that medal so special, is because I'm the only one that gets it. But I look at it, and I think of all the hard work that went into the people that show up every day. And you know, they're not here doing this type of thing. They're back there supporting somebody else's dream. And I think that that's incredibly special, and it's something that I'll always take away from Salt Lake City.